The Pope has issued a groundbreaking new law. It's the latest effort to combat sex abuse in the Catholic Church. All Catholic priests and nuns will now be required to report abuse and potential cover-ups, including those by their superiors to church authorities. So CBS News foreign correspondent Seth Doan is with us now from Italy. So these have really been the first concrete steps that we've seen being laid out by the church to combat sex abuse in the church. It occurred to me that these guidelines are basically the same guidelines that I think doctors, uh, teachers, at least here in this country, a lot of people who work with children are required to do by law. But it's, it is surprising, Seth, that it wasn't standard to begin with. Yeah. Well, what's interesting here to keep in mind is one of the major steps here is that this is universally required now through the entire church. The Pope wrote this this morning. This was released just a couple of hours ago, and it applies to the entire church. So there are some churches like the U.S. Catholic Church, which is quite a bit further along than other churches, say in parts of Asia or Africa. And this is saying, all right, everybody, get up to speed. This is universal. Let us create a system here. And yes, making what you said in that lead in there is one of the key things, the mandatory reporting for both priests and nuns to report abuse. They have to report abuse. Also of note, they have to report old cases of abuse. So you could see really a wave of new uh, abuse cases coming in that even uh, date back some time. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, so, but Seth, let me ask this then. Um, when, when they report the abuse, who they re, do they report it to? Do they report it to a bishop, uh, the, the leader of that parish or that diocese, or do they report it to the police? All right. Well, they notably do not, ha it is not mandatory for them to report it to the police, which is one of the criticisms, but it is mandatory for them to follow civil laws. So if you're in a country where you're supposed to report abuse, which is, of course, many countries in the world, now it is mandatory for anyone uh, to report that abuse to civil authorities. But it still does keep this in the realm of the church. Now, uh, how it's reported depends on where the abuse takes place, but it does set up a very a specific system to deal with that and it and it deals significantly with the issue of covering up abuse and uh, this issue which we looked at of course you remember quite a bit back in February when they held that landmark sex abuse summit at the Vatican the issue of uh, covering up was one of the biggest issues within the church so now there is a system in place uh, that they they can deal with that uh, most of it goes through these investigations are handled with by uh, someone called the Metropolitan, which is generally the Archbishop. The Metropolitan is, in essence, over the, it's kind of the biggest Archbishop um, of a region. But you remember, some of those Metropolitans have been people like Bernard Law and former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. So it sets up a system that if the allegations involve the Metropolitan, there is a system to bypass that. They also say you have to report to the Metropolitan or the Metropolitan's number two if the Metropolitan is involved. And in addition to that reporting, you also have to report uh, the cases of or the allegations of bishop abuse directly to the Vatican as well. So they're saying there'll now be a two channels that uh, this mandatory reporting in the case of a, of a, of a bishop uh, must be carried out. So I know does that uh, make sense. The, it, it does. It does make sense. Yeah. Um, I, I know it was just released uh, this morning, uh, this new law. So uh, people are just getting a look at it. But do we have reaction at all from those who are close to the Catholic Church or within the church? It's starting to come in, I'm sure. It won't surprise you, Anne-Marie. There's a lot of reaction already on Twitter. Uh, and we're really hearing uh, both both uh, sides of the equation here. Some people are heralding this as a major step forward. Hans Zollner, who you might remember, is the German priest who was involved in, uh, was kind of a moderator involved very early on, not moderating, but involved in actually the sexual abuse summit in February. He said this was a cultural shift to have this mandatory reporting for priests and nuns. He said the the issue is not solved, but this is a major step forward. But there's also criticism coming out early on here as people starting to pour through what this means and saying, look, you still have this going through the church, the church managing this process. And there are still loopholes. One of those loopholes is that issue of confession. If, if someone talks to you about uh, uh, abuse, a case of abuse in the confessional, and you're a priest, well, that is still sealed. That is still private information. It's like talking to your lawyer. That is protected information. So there are still loopholes here that people will certainly start to pick apart and say, hey, this is, is not enough. Now, the Vatican did say this is a, these are in place for three years in a trial period. So presumably they will review what works and what is not working and then look at them again. All right, Seth Doan reporting for us. Thank you, Seth.